Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. Right, you ready for the word? Right. You all got your cards? Right? I don't see anybody fanning here today. Okay, if you don't have a card, okay, you're supposed to have one. If you don't have one, you can raise your hand. If you've had one and you forgot it at home, do not put up your hand. Okay, don't be a thief. Okay, you've, then just remember, next time you bring it, or if you put it, the names on the phone, on your phone, that's all right. But if you're here for the first time today and you haven't received a card, raise your hands and you can get a card and we're going to be praying. And on this card, it's our prayer card for people that don't know Jesus, the people that are backslidden, that need to come to Jesus. This is our prayer card. You put your name on there. There's 10 places where we're going to pray for people that need to get saved. And that's what we're looking at today. We're looking at the condition of the lost and what we need to do to get that and how important it is. So what's happening on the 29th of March? Easter weekend, right? And what we're doing at Easter? Right, we've got our service at what time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, not here, at Moraletta Park. We're going to have it there, seat seven and a half thousand people, and we're going to be having church there. Okay, so we'll be getting our venues together that are connecting with us, except for Polakwani. Polakwani will be having their outreach as well, Cape Town will be having their outreach as well. So, um, so we got, uh, but the rest of the venues, you'll be joining us and we're trusting the Lord for many, many souls to get saved. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Okay, so you write down your 10 names. We'll get to that just now. You write down these 10 names and shortly in the church this morning, we're gonna be praying and trusting the Lord for breakthrough within their lives, amen. Right, so. So, when we talk about the condition of the world, we looked last week that we need to have a God-given, a God-given burden for those who do not know Jesus. We looked at the word where it says that he who wins souls is wise. Proverbs 11.30 says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of Life and he who wins souls is wise. Why are you wise? Because when you are focused on yourself, you're focused on your own needs, you're focused on your own wants, your eyes will always be down. When your eyes are down, it means you don't have vision. All you see is the sand. All you see is the mud. All you see is the issues. All you see is problems, which means you don't have foresight, you don't have insight, you don't have vision, and the Bible says, Proverbs 28, 29 and verse 18, he says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no revelation, what happens? He says, people are unrestrained. Are you hearing me here today? No. So, Matthew 9, verse 36, when Jesus saw the multitudes, when he did what? He saw the multitudes. So, when you go to eat out when you go to the shop, what do you see? Do you see the people or do you see, do you see, uh, 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 do you see the people or do you see them as the machinery that is there to serve you? So when you look at the waiter that is serving you, is it the multitude that you see that are weary and scattered like a shepherd having no shepherd or do you see it as the person that must give you, give you, give you, and you want, you want, and you take, you take, you take. In other words, why? Why is my coffee not hot? Why do you take so long to get here? How are you? What is going on? Call the manager. When you go to a shop, the cashier, the people that are serving you, what's going on? Why is it taking so long? You've got five people in a row. What's going on here? Why? Why? And the people, you're irritated by, you see, when you are a taker, you get irritated by people. Self, 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 self. 
narcissistic, self-indulging people get irritated with people. Bump your name and say, oh, oh, this is not going the right direction now. <laughs> going, whew, secure. Bump your name and say, this church service is not going as planned. <laughs> and you can see it. See it in the leaders. See it on Twitter. See it on Facebook. See it in our politicians. See it in our, our business leaders. See it in the church. See it in your relatives. See it in your family. See it in yourself. Why? Your eyes are down. Which means what? If your eyes are down, your eyes are in the sand, every decision you then will make will be a wrong decision. It will be a decision of maintenance. It will be a decision of the survival. It will be a decision of a victim, which means it will never be a, a, a decision of a conqueror. Because conquerors, their eyes are not in the sand. Are you hearing me here today? Their eyes are not on themselves. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they overcame him, how? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony, and they loved not their lives to the death. New Living Translation says they were not afraid to die. Shout it out. Say, it's not about me. It's not about me. Shout it out loud. Say, it's not about me. It's not about me. You see, when you get to that place and you start seeing the needs of others, the directions of others, now what that does, it pushes you to a place of compassion, and then when you correct and when you rebuke, it's not out of irritation for your own comfort, but it's out of the direction of the individual and where they're going and the destruction they're going to have within their lives. And you don't want them to get hurt. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. You see, so you can have two people saying exactly the same thing. You can have two people saying it, it with the same force, but one person, it brings life. Another person, it brings death. Another person, it empowers exactly the same words with exactly the same passion. One person, it empowers. Another person, it destroys. Why? It's got to do with the motive. See, if the motive is your discomfort, that's an issue. But if the motive is to help the individual, help them grow, help them become what God wants them to be, you see, then you, then you build. So say, tell with, say with me, he who wins souls, wins souls is wise. Is so that's why I'm helping you. That's hence this card. I know some of you have put your name in every one of those 10. Okay. That's why we're looking at others. We're praying for others. And that's why today with a, the little bit of time that I have left, I want to quickly, I, I, I'm not going to recap last week's sermon, the, the whole thing. Is it possible to pray for people that are unsaved? Yes. The question is, is God willing to save people? Yes. 2 Peter 3, verse 8 and 9. It says there, verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us. Listen to this. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Say with me, God wants everybody to be saved. 1 Timothy 2 verse 3 to 5. It says, for this is the good and acceptable and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Listen to verse 4. It says there, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. Does God want everybody to be saved? Yes, yes He wants everybody to be saved, right? Okay, so that's the word. Now look at 1 John chapter a 5 and verse 14. 1 John chapter 5 verse 14. He says, now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, if we do what? If we ask anything according to his will, 
The Bible says, He hears us, verse 15 says, and if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we have asked of Him. Isn't that encouraging? Amen. So, is it God's will that everyone be saved? I can't hear you. Yes. Is it God's will for everyone to be saved? Yes. And then what does He say if we pray according to His will? He says, we know that He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, we have. So that means we have. We have the petitions that we have asked of Him. Are you hearing me yet today? So can we pray for people that are unsaved? Yes, we can do that, right? Now, to understand how you pray for, for, for sinners, you've got to understand the word, the condition of sinners. First of all, somebody that is not saved, the Bible teaches us that their wills are bound by the devil himself, by Satan. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 25. It says, in humility correcting those who are in opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth. Verse 26, listen to this, verse 26. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, listen to this, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Having done, having been captive, they're taken captive by him. So it says they escape the snare. What is a snare? A snare is a trap. Do you willingly walk into a trap? No, a trap is there. You don't know it's a trap. Which means we mustn't walk around with a condescending, super spiritual attitude as if you're more spiritual than somebody else. Bump your neighbor and say, I told you. I said don't. Are you hearing me? Amen. Don't walk around with that condescending attitude. Always stay in humility. Because we understand that those that have been caught have been ensnared. A trap has been set. And as they stepped on that, the devil is the biggest and greatest liar on earth. The Bible calls him the father of lies. Are you hearing me? Which means if you can have somebody like a magician come and trick and you go, wow, how did he do that? How much more do you think the devil can't get you to believe that truth is real? If a magician can get you, wow, he's demon possessed. But it's just a trick. He's fast with his hands. How much more do you think the devil can't fool you? Are you hearing me yet today? So, therefore, he's the father of lies. He entraps people, which means their will is taken captive. Ephesians 2 verse 2. It says, in which you once walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. In other words, that word works means, means energizes. It means that the, 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 the devil energizes sinners to fulfill his mandate and purpose. 1 John 5, 19. It says that we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Say with me, the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one, which means you've been manipulated and he's working you. All of these things, he's working people. People are all going in a direction. That's why, please, don't do it because everybody else is doing it. The Bible says, no, the whole world, everybody else is under the sway of the wicked one. No, we have the truth. We have the word of God. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. Don't be called, caught under the sway of the wicked one. So what do we need to do? We need to bind the strong man. Luke eleven twenty one 21 says, When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger, when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he's trying, and he divides the spoils. So we've got to take 
We've got to take, we've got to pray, we've got to set their wills free, we've got to bind the strong man. Are you, are you hearing me here today? So that's number one. When it comes to sinners, they are their wills through entrapment. And that's why as Christians, you've got to be careful. Don't open the door. When you open the door to things within your life, the devil, the devil entraps your will. And when you find yourself, you can't help yourself. And this is where you're going. Never fall into that place of entrapment. Never be blinded. That's why repentance is critical. Can I get a big amen there? That's why never lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself. You get to this place where you start lying to yourself and now you start building an ideology around your sin while you have the right to sin. It's one of the most dangerous places you can be because you are led astray and you lead other people astray. Recognize your sin. Stop making excuses for your sin. Be quick to repent. Can I get a big amen there? Number two, sinners are blinded by Satan, by the devil. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 3, but even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. Verse 4, whose minds this God of this age has done what? He has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God, should shine upon them. In other words, when God comes, He brings revelation to the unsaved. Those who don't know the Lord. So it's not my job to bring revelation. My job is to preach the gospel. But as they receive, if they are seeking, if they are seeking and they receive what happens, the Spirit of God connects with the Spirit on the inside and starts speaking within their lives. Ephesians 4, 17. Uh, This is what I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. How do they walk? In the futility of their mind. Futility means uselessness, meaninglessness, emptiness of their mind. They're working to fulfill certain standards and mandates, only getting there, realizing that there's nothing there. It's like climbing... The ladder of success, only to realize your ladder was standing against the wrong wall. You climb and you climb and you climb and you climb, only to get there and you realize there's nothing there. Futility of their mind. You're using your mind, you're using your intellect, but you're useless. It's useless information. It's bringing no transformation. And of course, I can get a lot rougher and tell you exit and I can give you names and certain disciplines and certain things that get taught at the university of courses and the whole course is a lie. Some of you educated liars. where we sit for hours and hours and hours studying the lies of men. Read the Bible. Bump your neighbor and say, you know, read the Bible. Start there. (laughs) And I'm being kind. I'm being kind. Because everything the Bible refers to here calls it satanic. Are you hearing me here? So understand those things. Don't be so far removed. And and by that, I'm not against education. Not at all. I'm educated. My wife is educated. It's not, it's not, we don't have an issue with education per se. But you've got to judge all things. You understand? That's not the beginning and end of all. Can I get a big amen there? It's a tool to skill you to be more effective in serving others. Not in propping you up because you're insecure to say, hey, you know, uh uh-uh. You take it as a skill to be a blessing to serve others. Can I get a big amen there? So don't be useless. Verse 18, having their understanding darkened. Their understanding is darkened because of the ignorance. Ignorance is the lack of wanting knowledge. Ignorance is willful blindness. It's not that you don't know, it's that you don't want to know. 
And that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness. To work all uncleanness with greediness. What is greediness? Greediness is when everything is for yourself. And that is what we are taught now. Look after yourself. We twist the Bible. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Well, let's start off by loving ourselves. Because how do you love someone if they don't, if you don't love yourself? Self care, self, 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 self. <laughs> bye bye, gone. You finished. Over. You're done. That's it. End of life for you. That's it. So we twist the Bible. No, it's in loving others you learn to love yourself. It's not you love yourself so you can love others. But that's how the devil does. He takes the scriptures, twists the scriptures to satisfy the narcissist, the narcissist within us. No, no. Don't have to discover ourselves. The Bible says die to yourself. Bump your neighbor and say die to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Tell your neighbor, you're actually quite awesome. You'll discover. You'll actually just... Just die, you'll see how awesome you are. You're actually quite awesome. Tell your neighbor, you're actually quite awesome. Yeah. You don't need to discover yourself. Die to yourself. Die to your sin. Die to your rubbish. Get to God and let God make you according to the original design for your life. Ish. Mm. Amen. The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit. They're foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Hallelujah. And that's why short time's up already. So what do we do? We've got to understand, for this is 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus came and died on the cross of Calvary. And then what did that do? By dying on the cross, it gave him legal access to hell, to the domain of the devil. Hallelujah. And what happened is that the Bible in Colossians 2.15, he came into that place and they thought they had overcoming. They thought they had overcome Jesus by, 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 by murdering him. But what happened, they didn't realize they actually gave him access right to death. And when he got into that place, he disarmed principalities and powers, verse 15, and he made a public spectacle of them, triumphant over them. Matthew 18, 18 says, Therefore, surely I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed on heaven. James, James 4, verse 7, Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Yo, Satan! Yeah. If you want to fight it in an intellectual way, you want to fight it in an emotional way. You want to fight it in the soulish realm. You're going to lose every time. No, no, no. Jesus has already overcome. You see, he's already done the work. So what we now do, we enforce, Lord, as it is in heaven, your kingdom come, Lord. As it is in heaven, now what do we do? We come and we enforce it here on the earth. Are you hearing me here today? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet just there where you are. Become aware of the presence of God in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Eyes closed. If you got your card, take out that card. If you got your phone, the names are on that phone. Write down the names. And by this, no condescending judgmental attitude the Bible says judge not lest you fall in the same if you judge somebody for their sin the Bible says be careful you'll fall into the same sin you judge be careful be careful you judge somebody for their sin all the might of that satanic forces is going to come and tempt you and let's see if you can stand so don't be judgmental don't be condescending 
We pray for people because we love them. Because of what God has done within our lives and what He's doing in our lives, we want Him to do in other people's lives. Just there where I close your eyes, lay hands on the people. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we are trusting for these people to get saved. It's relatives, it's colleagues, it's friends. And thank you, Lord, first of all, that you're helping us to take our eyes off ourselves. And that's why we're finding ourselves in a continual mess and strife. Because we don't believe, we don't trust your word. But today we trust, Lord. He who wins souls is wise. And you're helping us, Lord, to see others. We've got names of relatives, of friends, of neighbors, of colleagues. And first of all, Lord, we pray that you will save them. It's your will that they get saved. <laughs> That's why you hear our prayers today. But Lord, you said we can pray. You said we can pray. And first of all, we pray, Lord, that you'll set their wills free where they have been ensnared by the devil. According to your word, we take authority over every power of the devil that is holding their will hostage. And we pray, Lord, that you'll set their wills free in Jesus' name, that they will have the option to at least choose. At the moment they can't even choose, they're so ensnared. And therefore, we pray, Lord, set their wills free. Set their wills free. Holy Spirit of God, we loosen your spirit upon each and every one of their lives. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will move and work with, on the inside of them, that you reveal the love of daddy to them, that they'll know how much you love them, how much you care for them, that you want to forgive them and cleanse them, and that you have an original design and purpose for their lives. Work within their lives right now in the name of Jesus. Many of these people, Lord, don't know what to do. Many of them, like we've experienced yesterday, ready, took their own lives. Many people, they've come to the end of their road. But Lord, thank you that that lie the devil sells them. We take authority over that in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you'll open the eyes of their understanding. Lord, that they'll see the truth. Open their eyes, Lord, to your love. Open their eyes to your purpose. Open their eyes, Lord, they, they can see what you want to do in and through them. Open their eyes to the lies of the evil one, the lies of the devil, Lord, so that they might know. And I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you'll draw them unto you by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you'll draw them unto you right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And just there where you are, I want you to start praying. Come on, start lifting up your voice. Start praying. Come on, pray. Lift up your voices. Lift up your voices. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come and pray for your loved ones. Pray for your colleagues. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for somebody else. Don't be a narcissist. Pray for somebody else, not yourself. Like you cry for yourself, cry for somebody else. Somebody else's soul. Somebody else's condition. Somebody else's need. Move and work within their hearts, Lord. Move and work within their lives, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Do a miracle, Lord. Draw them unto you by the power of your Holy Spirit. Draw them unto you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when two or three agree concerning anything, the Bible says, it shall come to pass. Turn to two or three people. Form a group quickly. Pray with one another. Agree. Pray for your people together. Come on, let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. We stand together where two or three agree. Thank you, Lord. 
take authority in the name of Jesus. We call our neighbors, we call our loved ones. Thank you, Lord. You do a work within their lives. Change and transformation, they will be saved, Lord. Their lives will be changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. Thank you. It is done. It is done. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity. You give us the strategy to share the gospel with them. You give us the opportunity to invite them, to touch their lives, to make a difference in their lives. Thank you, Lord. You do it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Maybe there's somebody here. You've not yet given your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you and give you an opportunity. Calling yourself Christian doesn't mean you're Christian. You must be born again. To be a child of God, you've got to be born of God. Coming to church doesn't make you Christian. Having Christian parents doesn't make you Christian. You must be born again. John 3 verse 3 says you must be born again. Otherwise, you will not see the kingdom. It's in the Bible. What does that mean? That means you acknowledge that you're a sinner, you need God. And you make a decision and say, Lord, I'm done being God of my life. I need you in my life to be my God. God will come in, take out that old nature. He'll forgive your sin, cleanse you. And he'll give you the opportunity to walk with him. He'll lead you and guide you in all things, but he'll change you. Your life will never be the same again. While every head is bowed, every eye is closed, if that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you backslidden, you've moved away from God maybe, or you've never done it before, if that's you, you want to come to Jesus today. While every eye is closed, every head is bowed, quickly slip up your hand. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. See hands going up all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Put your hands down. I'll ask, ask one more time. Jesus said, now is the time of salvation. Now the translation says today. Why is that? There's people that woke up this morning that will not see the end of this day. They don't even know it yet. That's a fact of life. No one's guaranteed of tomorrow. If you stand before God one day, today is your life right with God. Or whether it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years from now, this might be your only time where you really, really sense this is a place where God is speaking to you you will stand before God one day you'll say remember that day I spoke to you you rejected me you'll never be able to say ever again in your life you did not know today you know therefore I want to give you one more chance if you never raise your hand quickly slip it up now one two three thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you you can put your hands down thank you now I want to pray with you through all our venues that are connected I want to pray with you. If you can do one more thing for me, just take your belongings. Don't leave it in your chair. Quickly come out in the aisles. I want to pray with you. Quickly come forward. Come on. There is power in the blood of Jesus.
bow your heads in prayer, every head bowed, every eye closed. Say these words with me. Say to me, dear Jesus, I need you in my life. Please forgive my sin. Take out this old nature. Fill me with your spirit. Everything that I am, I surrender unto you. My whole life, I give to you. I trust you, Lord. I trust your word that says, if I receive you and believe, I have the right to be called the child of God. And thank you, Lord. As from now, I belong to you. And nothing can snatch me out of your hands because I am yours. Heavenly Father, I pray for each and every one of these, your children. Every power of the devil broken over their lives, every curse removed. And I thank you, Lord, your hand is upon them. Every power is a, a broken over their lives. You draw a hedge of protection around them. And as from now, they're going to grow to become everything you have called them to be. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, are you blessed? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to forth, go forth and conquer. He who? He who? When souls is wise. So what do we have to do? Lift up your eyes. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Tell your neighbor you're going to be okay. Amen. You're going to be okay. If you need healing, place it on the place where you are sick. need healing in your heart, place your hand on your heart. Lord, I pray for those that are struggling with physical health. Your word says that by your stripes we have healing. We apply the blood of Jesus' stripes on his back. We apply it over each and every person right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every spirit of sickness, illness, disease. You have got no right in their bodies, you've got no right in their life. We take authority over your work in the name of Jesus. Lord, we release a spirit of healing right now in Jesus' name. For those whose hearts are broken, I thank you, Lord, for healing that you bring right now. You know what they've gone through. You understand what they're feeling. You understand the hurt, the burden. And I thank you, Lord, as we release and forgive right now. I thank you, Lord, that you bring healing right now in every heart right now in Jesus name just receive the healing of the Lord say thank you Lord by your stripes I am healed just lift up your hands everybody just stay where you are and Lord I pray for each and every person whatever their needs are breakthrough in every life every financial need every issue at work in the job in businesses you're in control Lord you're in control we give it to you place our burdens unto you you know our worries you, your, our cares you're a miracle working God, Lord. Where we have failed you, you forgive us, you cleanse us. But Lord, take control of our situation, our circumstances right now in the name of Jesus. And we give you praise, Lord. And Lord, I pray as we go our different ways. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us. You lead us and guide us. And whatever is needed, you provide. Your favor is upon us. Your grace rests upon us. Your mercy and loving kindness follows us all the days of our lives. And thank you, Lord. Whatever we put our hand to will be blessed. Wherever we tread, we shall possess. You're in control of our lives. And thank you, Lord, that your goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. In Jesus' name, everybody shouted. Amen. Love you. God bless you. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by the 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word PRAY followed by your prayer request to 33347 and our team of prayer warriors will pray for you for 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word PARTNER to 33347 and one of our team members will get back to you within the next few days. 
You can follow Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates, and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more information. 